Hello and welcome to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. We're your hosts, Dr. Andrew Miles and Dr. Shui Lan Chiu. Herbal medicines helped in the control of SARS. And as we look at growing pandemics, especially in the modern era where we face increased environmental pollutants and warming temperatures that are unlocking virulent strains of new diseases. We need to consider how to intelligently use these medicines to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and enhance our quality of life. Dr. Liu Qingquan, the director of Beijing TCM Hospital, and Dr. Tong Xiaoling, vice director of Guang'anmen Hospital, were among the first doctors entering SARS-infected area and both treated hundreds of SARS patients in 2003. Dr. Tong Xiaoling helped formulate the TCM treatment protocols, which were used nationally and tremendously helped China to win the battle with SARS. Sixteen years later, they arrived in Wuhan, the front line of fighting the novel coronavirus. They saw patients from both the inpatient departments and ICU. After carefully checking the patients, they and the expert panel came to the conclusion that the novel coronavirus causing pneumonia fell into the TCM categories of Yi Bing, plague, and more specifically, Shi Wen, damp plague. The symptoms for the first week are that the patients have a low fever or no fever, fatigue, weakness, as well as a lot of digestive symptoms, such as poor appetite, nausea, diarrhea, and tightness in the chest. Most have a dry or sore throat. Some have a dry cough with no phlegm. If patients don't get better within the first week, the reports from the ICU are that the body temperature tends to suddenly increase to 39 degrees. They develop shortness of breath, low oxygen saturation, and severe pneumonia symptoms. They observed the tongue, specifically the polymicrobial biofilm, and found that whether it was yellow or white, it tended to be very thick. The local weather in Wuhan has been rainy, humid, and cold. And in spite of that cold, it's actually been a few degrees warmer, possibly due to global warming or other climate shifts, it's caused a difference in the way that these diseases are manifesting. So the TCM pattern in differentiation is dampness. Okay, so what does that mean? If we look at herbal formulas which treat dampness in its various stages and positions in the body ranging from the exterior to the interior, we can get an idea for this core concept that is so important for the coronavirus. Generally speaking, dampness refers to polymicrobial dysbiosis in the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urogenital microbiomes, as well as the extracellular fluid compartments. There's water retention, a thick polymicrobial biofilm on the tongue, and all of this has been associated with dampness historically and has been confirmed to be associated with various states of dysbiosis. When the tongue coating is yellow, it's been traditionally associated with heat and elevated body temperature. In studies, this yellow coating is associated with increases in bacillus bacteria in over 70% of cases. This particular bacteria communicates with the body's hypothalamus raising the body temperature because that's what this particular bacteria likes. So what does this condition of dysbiosis have to do with virulence and what do fungi and bacteria have to do with this virus? Viruses do their best work against the immune compromised. So far, the fatalities have occurred in largely immune compromised people such as those who are overweight or have diabetes or another chronic illness. They also team up with pathogenic microbes to get to the interior of the body. The state of dampness, 
water retention and dysbiosis in the microbiomes of the body, which allow the coronavirus to get in for later viral expressions. To make matters worse, the virus isn't the only contagious aspect. The microbiomes of the skin and our atmospheric cloud is contagious, influencing how obesity and other chronic illnesses, previously called non-contagious illnesses, spread through communities of people. These atmospheres which surround us in the environment are highly influenced by our internal atmospheres within our microbiomes and the surrounding atmosphere in Wuhan that was one that was cold and damp. As human body temperatures are lowering, as we are more sedentary, as we have more water retention and are sweating regularly, our immune systems are not in optimum shape. So what we're looking at is not just a virus. It's a team of superhero pathogens, which are likely viral, fungi, and bacterial in nature, teaming up in order to infiltrate the body. The coronavirus isn't a one-off. It's only the beginning. Global warming is releasing various types of fungi and yeasts, and with international travel, they're forming hybrids because yeasts and fungi reproduce sexually. As a result, in cold and damp climates like Seattle, we're starting to see previously tropical diseases or diseases which act with a kind of tropical virulence. And this is because of the hybrid vigor of these crossbreeding fungi. Another factor which causes these types of damp plagues to really spread is a pastoral diet, a diet that is rich in meat and dairy that's associated with increased obesity and water retention. Air pollution is certainly not making this any easier. And in particular, plastics, which we are breathing, drinking, and eating at an alarming rate, are causing intestinal permeability and additional water retention with generalized inflammation. A Chinese medical neurologist in the teaching hospital of Chengdu TCM University was found to be infected. She started to have a low fever and was soon diagnosed with novel pneumonia. An expert panel, including Dr. Zhang Zhiwen, formed a treatment protocol after examining her. A base formula of Huoxiang Zhengqi was used along with antiviral Western medications. Her fever dropped back to normal in a couple of days, and she's currently recovering in quarantine. Does this mean that the listed formula is a cure-all? No. What we need to take away from this is not some super formula, because I've seen it going around that people are selling formulas, herbal formulas, which promise to cure the coronavirus. This is absolute nonsense and quackery. In order to reduce virulence in our current era, we need to understand dampness and how to treat it. This begins with understanding the ecology of our microbiomes and how they respond to the outer environment. Using random antiviral herbs can and will make it worse. In fact, many Chinese medicine doctors themselves are screwing this up. They're looking at research of herbs which are antiviral and using them because of their antiviral capacity, and they're not considering the system's biology approach. So I have to ask, Lan, as someone with their doctorate in herbal pharmacology, is this approach intelligent or is it missing something? It's definitely missing the big picture. The herbal pharmacology is to help you understand why the herbs, why the formulas are working. It's not for you to decide what herbs to use without the big picture, without the context of the TCM thinking, the TCM diagnosing, the TCM patterns. Do we really have to look at the system's biology at work here? What we have is something akin to a compost pile, which may be wet, and damp, but can get so much microbial activity that it catches fire. This can also happen in barns. Hay will get wet and it will start to generate heat. And this 
is not the same as uh, just straight fire, right? We know this in the environment. If you have dampness, which is creating this kind of metabolic heat, it's very different from something that's dry and hot. So this is called the damp toxin transferring into heat. It is not the same as just heat. In this case, once the dampness is removed, the heat clears by itself. If you use cold herbs, which are heat clearing herbs, like banangan or yin chao san uh, as the base formulas, because of their anti-inflammatory effects or because they're antiviral, these will cause dysbiosis in the gut, which causes the microbiomes to be even colder and more damp than before. It can even cause a condition called bing fu, hidden ice. Using damp draining herbs with volatile oils to expel through the skin and regulate the GI microbiome is the general approach that we want to take, aromatically transforming dampness. The heat goes away once the dampness is drained because the body no longer supports it as a suitable host. Nuking the microbiome with formulas which will work in different types of epidemics. They even helped in SARS, but they will not help now. We have to look at when and how we treat diseases when it's a damp plague. Looking at the antiviral herbs in isolation without considering the host microbial ecology is a dangerous approach and one that we can't afford to take. We must address dampness specifically and understand how to cultivate our own microbiome for disease resilience on a warming planet. So with dampness, interleukin-2 and interleukin-8 are elevated. Serum gastrin is decreased. Gastric mucosa SOD is decreased. Gastric mucosa MDA is increased. There are also changes in aquaporins, integral membrane proteins that serve as channels in the transfer of water. Aquaporin 2 in urine decreases with dampness. And formulas such as Sanren Tang have been found to regulate aquaporin 2 and the HPA axis. Substance P and somatostatin are found decreased. As we go forward, volatile organic compounds may be tested through electronic noses as an easy screening device. However, what is the easiest, cheapest, and one of the most time-tested ways of looking for dampness? Look at your tongue. Is your tongue thick? Is it fat as well as taking up space in your mouth? That can be a sign of water retention or more fat content in the muscle. Look at the polymicrobial biofilm. Is it thickly coated? If you're eating foods which make the coating thicker, you may be making yourself more susceptible. Ask yourself about your water metabolism. Do you have to remind yourself to drink water? Is it that you get all of your water intake because you keep your water bottle with you? Or is it that you really feel thirsty and go to drink? How about water retention? Does your face look puffy in the morning? Are your bowel movements normal or if you had digestive distress? Are you in a state of obesity or overweight? Are you a good fungal host or... You're finding that you have toenail fungus and candida more often than not. This is a good time to see a Chinese medical herbalist and get that taken care of. Now, generally, we want to use methods at home, which can also strengthen our resilience. You're going to want to look at ginger and garlic, cook with those more, as well as seeing an acupuncturist uh, specifically for moxibustion. In addition, you'll want to limit mold and fungal exposure. Make sure that you don't have mold in your house. Make sure that the area that you're living in is dry and not harboring the types of fungi and bacteria which may be teaming up with the coronavirus or viruses like it. Hit the sauna at least once a week. You want to be sweating so that you get a better immune balance. Sweating releases factors in sweat, such as dermcidin, which as it's released, can have a regulatory effect on the immune system. Keep your immune system strong, stock up on masks, because although the virus is not proving to be deadly toward a high percentage of the population, it is spreading, and it's spreading in a very insidious way, which means sooner or later, it will be finding its way to your doorstep. 
But when that happens, will you and your family be prepared? We've been working in conjunction with Dr. Jin Zhao to make a class on how to treat damp pathogens specifically, how to treat dampness in the body. This is called microbiome mastery. You can find it at botanicalbiohacking.com. And the first hundred of these classes sold are going to go to supporting the TCM doctors in China who right now are facing this illness without any protective clothing. They're facing the general population without protective clothing because it's all sold out and it's going to the emergency departments, which is rational, but they're completely exposed. We've already sent, how many sets did we send now? Uh, 150. We sent 150 sets to our friends in the teaching hospital, but more are needed across the country. So please contact, uh, don't just send it randomly. You'll want to contact somebody at the Chinese medical hospital so that they're there to receive it. What's that? Oh, they can contact me and then. You can contact me at botanicalbiohacking at gmail.com and we can figure this out to see how you can help. Thank you so much for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. We're your hosts, Dr. Andrew Miles and Dr. Shui Lan Chiu.